Hey everyone, it's Hacks. Before today's video, I want to take a moment to invite you to participate in EMG's upcoming online tournament, Get On My Line 2020. Get On My Line will feature a melee event on July 18th and an ultimate event on July 25th. Each game is free to enter and will feature a $2,500 prize pool. If you're feeling the blues from the lack of a Get On My Level this summer, make sure to head over to smash.gg slash line. In my last YouTube video, I gave an introductory course on ASDI Down, the mechanic responsible for characters colliding with the floor directly after being attacked. As I explained back then, colliding with the floor is generally better than the alternative of being launched airborne. By colliding with the floor, your character will lose all of their hit stun and take only 4 frames of landing lag if they're below tumble percent, or 26 frames of knockdown lag if they're above tumble percent. Alternatively, you can choose to tech instead of taking knockdown lag. This will spend 26 frames in lag as well, but your character will be actionable afterward. From this point on, the behavior I just described will collectively be referred to as a floor hug. Floor hugging is the term I use to describe the act of being launched airborne from the ground, then causing floor collision on the frame after hit lag with ASDI down. This is independent of whether a tech is performed or not. The existence of floor hugging opens up a whole new world of possibilities for us to consider. Conventionally, we've been taught concepts such as combo DI and survival DI while being juggled, or using smash DI to counter specific moves. Not only is hugging the floor after being attacked a more recent development, but it is also radically different from what we're used to. This leads us to wonder just how far floor hugging can be pushed. As it turns out, floor hugging is the gateway to an entirely new set of skills that are crucial in today's metagame. In today's video, I'll be exploring how floor hugging can be used to survive attacks until unbelievably high percents. If you're a fan of this kind of melee content, please don't forget to subscribe. In my last video, I went over the importance of recognizing your opponent's percent thresholds. In the Fox vs. Falcon matchup, for example, Falcon will be sent tumbling by Fox's Nair starting at 43%. While tumble percent is one of the most important thresholds to be aware of, it is far from the only one. To uncover the rest of the thresholds, we'll have to delve deeper. The next percent threshold to know about has to do with when a floor hug stops working. As we know, ASDI down can't cause a floor hug forever. Eventually, there comes a percent where your character will be lifted into the air no matter what. To understand when this percent will come, let's revisit what causes a floor hug to work in the first place. Floor hugs are enabled by ASDI, which is a defensive mechanic that can be used during hit lag. ASDI multiplies your analog stick or C stick coordinates by 3 then teleports your character that distance on the game's X and Y axes after hit lag ends. This means that the furthest your character can ASDI in a single direction is 3 units. To floor hug, you must ASDI down far enough that your character collides with the floor. However, there will be forces working against your ability to do so. Specifically, the distance that your character would have traveled upwards from the attack's knockback will resist your ASDI down. At 116%, for example, Fox's Nair will normally send Falcon 2.98 units upward on the frame after hit lag. At this percent, Falcon can ASDI down 3 units to cause a floor hug. At 117%, however, Falcon will travel just a bit past 3 units upward. Now, ASDI down isn't enough to stop Falcon from being sent flying. 117% is the next threshold for Fox to keep in mind when nairing Falcon. However, this threshold isn't as severe for Falcon as you may be thinking. Although it's true that ASDI down by itself can't give Falcon a floor hug at this percent, there is still a way for Falcon to prolong his ability to floor hug until a considerably higher percent. To do this, Falcon must tap into an even stronger form of floor hugging. The stronger form of floor hugging I'm referring to is enabled by yet another defensive mechanic, Trajectory DI. Trajectory DI, which most people just call DI, allows us to modify the trajectory of an attack by up to 18 degrees. This is done with the analog stick on the last frame of hit lag. The best possible TDI is performed by pointing the analog stick perpendicular to the trajectory of the attack, and by pushing the analog stick fully outwards towards the rim. The first step to proper TDI is familiarizing yourself with attack trajectories. Fox's Nair, for example, has a unique trajectory called 361 that I went over in my last video. 361 refers to a special set of criteria that the game uses to determine the attack's real trajectory. In this context, we can always think of 361 as 44 degrees, as that is what it will be whenever the victim is grounded and at high percent. The next step to TDI is understanding where to point the analog stick. 
It is important to note that there is a difference between theoretical TDI and human level TDI because of the fact that the GameCube controller's rim has 8 grooves. These grooves are situated on each of the cardinal directions and 45 degree angles. Realistically, you'll end up pointing in one of these 8 grooves whenever you TDI. Even though this may not give you the best possible coordinates in the game, it is still a perfectly viable strategy. For these reasons, I'll only be referencing these 8 sets of TDI coordinates from now on. As I said a moment ago, Fox's Nair will send a high percent grounded opponent at a 44 degree angle. From there, the best analog stick groove to choose is the one in Quadrant 4. This groove's coordinates are almost perfectly perpendicular to the trajectory of Fox's Nair which means they will modify its trajectory by just shy of 18 degrees. Now, Fox's Nair's trajectory is roughly 26 degrees. With this information under our belt, let's go back to the scenario in which Falcon is Nair'd by Fox at 117%. Without the use of any defensive mechanics, this Nair sends Falcon just a bit more than 3 units upward on the frame after hit lag, which exceeds the distance he can travel with ASDI down. However, let's see what happens when we input TDI with the analog stick in addition to ASDI down with the C stick. As you can see, Falcon is able to floor hug once again. With the help of TDI, Falcon is able to floor hug Fox's Nair up to an unbelievable 205%. This technique, which we'll call a TDI floor hug, is the strongest form of floor hugging in the game. TDI floor hugging requires you to TDI perpendicular to the attack's trajectory with the analog stick while ASDIing straight down with the C stick. This allows you to maximize your character's downwards influence and floor hug until the highest possible percent. At 206%, Falcon finally loses his ability to TDI floor hug Fox's Nair. As Fox, this is the third and final threshold to be aware of when Nairing Falcon. Only at this percent can Fox know that a Nair will send Falcon flying. Now that we've established all three percent thresholds, we have to know about some of the more complicated implications they come with. These implications will affect the options that are available to us, and therefore they'll affect the decisions that we make. I'll start with the main downside of being in the percent threshold where you can only perform a TDI floor hug and not a regular floor hug. Once you are in this threshold, your opponent knows that your analog stick must be pointed horizontally in order for you to floor hug, which means you can no longer perform a tech in place. This is crucial because it limits the defender's options. When Falcon is at 116% for example, he has the option to ASDI down tech or ASDI down tech roll Fox's Nair. However, once Falcon enters the percent threshold where he can only TDI floor hug, he can only tech roll, as his analog stick must be pointed horizontally. Because tech rolls take 14 frames longer to complete than regular techs, they give the attacker much more time to react. The next fact to establish is that even within each of the percent thresholds, your character will still be sent further horizontally as their percent accumulates. At 205%, for example, Fox's Nair will still devastate Falcon even after a TDI floor hug. So then, what use is TDI floor hugging if it doesn't save us in situations like these anyway? While it's true that a TDI floor hug won't save us on its own, it will if we know what we're doing. The first step towards surviving this Nair is for Falcon to perform a tech roll. To find out why, watch what happens once Falcon reaches the end of the stage. As you can see, Falcon is unable to leave the stage for the entirety of his tech roll animation. While he still ends up flying off stage after his tech roll completes, the fact that he didn't leave the stage during tech roll is crucial. The reason Falcon stayed on stage during tech roll is because he gained a property called Rooted. Rooted is a property that prevents a character from leaving a stage or platform until the animation they are in completes. Conveniently, tech roll happens to be one of several states that root your character. On the other hand, knockdown, tech in place, and shield are examples of states that don't root your character. The other thing to pay attention to during Falcon's tech roll is his x-axis knockback velocity on each frame. On every frame of Falcon's tech roll, his XKBV declined by 0.08, which led to him having 3.19 XKBV remaining on the final frame of his tech roll. The linear rate at which Falcon's XKBV declined as he tech rolled is called his traction statistic. Traction is best known for determining how slippery a character's wave dashes are, but it serves other purposes too, such as deteriorating knockback velocity. Traction is applied on every frame that your character is grounded, which means it is applied during a tech roll. At this point you might be able to see where I'm going with this. If traction is applied on every frame that your character is grounded, and rooting your character guarantees that they stay grounded, then the trick is for Falcon to root himself again after his tech roll. This will ensure that Falcon cannot fly off stage no matter how much knockback he has. As silly as it sounds, Falcon can input a taunt, a falcon punch, or just about anything to achieve this purpose. 
Notice how Falcon's XKBV continues to deteriorate while he spends time in these animations. The problem, however, is that the options I just listed must be input on the exact frame Falcon's tech roll ends, or else Falcon will fly off stage. This means that there is only a one frame window to perform them. Luckily, there is one option for rooting your character that stands out above the rest, and that option is to spot dodge. However, I'm not just referring to any kind of spot dodge. I'm specifically referring to a spot dodge that is performed with the analog stick. The difference between an analog stick spot dodge and a C stick spot dodge is subtle but important. The Falcon on the left is performing frame perfect analog stick spot dodges, while the Falcon on the right is performing buffered spot dodges with the C stick. You might think that these things are the same, but the difference is that C stick spot dodges will always shield for a frame before they start. This means that the Falcon on the right is falling behind by a frame on each of his spot dodges. As far as how this matters for the tech roll scenario, the problem is that Falcon cannot afford to shield for even a frame before spot dodging or else he'll immediately fly off stage. For this reason, Falcon must use an analog stick spot dodge to root himself immediately after tech rolling. Falcon will then spend 32 frames in spot dodge, at which point he'll only have 0.63 XKBV remaining on the last frame. This is a small enough amount of XKBV that Falcon can fall off stage and grab the ledge afterward. The reason an analog stick spot dodge is the best way to root your character is because it gives you a 4 frame window for a frame perfect input. To be exact, you can buffer an analog stick spot dodge as early as frame 38 of your tech roll and it will still come out on frame 41, which is the frame after tech roll completes. You can also chain analog stick spot dodges together by timing them one after another in the same way. Falcon spot dodge for example lasts 32 frames, which means you can buffer another spot dodge as early as frame 30. Timing these spot dodges perfectly becomes very easy with practice. Considering how important spot dodges are for executing this strategy, I've included a chart that shows how long each character's spot dodge lasts, how much knockback velocity is subtracted on each frame, and how much knockback velocity is subtracted over the course of the entire spot dodge. This chart can help you gauge things such as how many spot dodges to perform after tech rolling. The technique that I've shown you in this video has some unbelievable implications. For proof, look no further than this clip of Falcon being down smashed by Fox at 999%. Normally Falcon dies so quickly that he practically disappears, but by performing a TDI floor hug, then tech rolling, then using 8 spot dodges, Falcon can live to see another day. This is possible because Fox's down smash has a shallow trajectory that Falcon can always TDI floor hug. As a result, this move can never kill Falcon. Needless to say, TDI floor hugging is a powerful technique that the attacker and defender should both be aware of. This is why I emphasize the importance of these 3% thresholds earlier. Whenever you or your opponent attack each other, you'll have the edge if you keep these thresholds in mind. Just to be clear, the percents on this chart only apply to Fox's Nair. Percents will vary depending on the attack being used, and the correct direction to TDI may vary as well. My next YouTube video will be the last one in my series of ASDI down videos. In it, I'll be exploring the final game-changing strategy that is enabled by ASDI Down. This one is a must for every Melee player to know about, so make sure to check it out.